plate which has an irregular shape with several holes along its perimeter. The plate is suspended on a horizontal axis through one of the holes. It keeps ceasing to move in one and the same equilibrium position. To mark this position, let's attach a plumb bob to the axis and draw a straight line along it. We now suspend the plate through another hole and repeat all that we did with the plumb bob. And we do the same thing once again. Remarkably, all the three plumb bobs have intersected in the same point. This point is called the plate's center of gravity. Whatever point we choose to suspend the plate by, its gravity center turns out to be in the lowest position, which is at the plumb bob. We wonder what will happen if we suspend the plate by the gravity center itself. The plate can hang motionlessly or rotate. This type of equilibrium is called indifferent. Let's make another experiment. We put a tube upright and place the plate's gravity center point onto the tube's end. The plate does not decline in any direction from this position either because all its parts balance each other up. Let's discuss now how we can find the gravity center of a uniform flat plate. Physics gets closer to geometry in such problems, so our reasoning becomes similar to proving a geometry theorem. Both in physics and in geometry, we often make use of the considerations connected with the symmetry of the system involved. For example, if a plate has a symmetry axis, then the gravity center is situated in some place on this axis, though we don't know where exactly. It's good when a plate has two symmetry axes. The gravity center has to be situated on each axis, which means it coincides with their point of intersection. If a plate has a symmetry center, it will also be its gravity center. But what shall we do if a plate is asymmetrical? In certain situations, the following reasoning can help. Let's divide the plate into a red and a yellow part and presume we have already found out where the gravity center of each part is. Let's suspend the plate by the gravity center of the yellow part. If there were no red part, the yellow one would be in an indifferent equilibrium but the red part will continue turning until its gravity center is underneath the suspension point. However, the gravity center of the whole plate will be situated underneath the suspension point as well. This means that the plate's gravity center is in some place on the interval connecting the gravity centers of its two parts. Let's establish the gravity center of a rectangular plate with a cut-out corner by means of geometrical reasoning. To do this, we have to divide it into two rectangles. Each rectangle's center of gravity is situated in the intersection point of its diagonals. Therefore, the plate's gravity center must be in some point on the red interval connecting these rectangle's centers. But the plate can be divided into rectangles in a different way and their gravity centers will shift correspondingly. In this case, the plate's gravity center is situated in some point on the blue interval. If the gravity center must be situated both on the red and on the blue interval, then it can be found in their intersection point. The center of gravity is connected with equilibrium. Whether the balance is going to be stable or not strongly depends on the position of the gravity center. Let's place a bottle into a plastic upholder. The bottle is in equilibrium, and it can even be slightly swayed, but not too much. It will stay in equilibrium while its gravity center is situated above the supporting surface. A pencil cannot stand on its nib. The supporting surface is too small. Even if the pencil's gravity center was situated precisely above it, the faintest air movement would be enough for the pencil to fall. We stick the knife into the pencil and make the pencil's nib touch the rubber.
The pencil does not fall down. You can even be swayed. The thing is that now the gravity center of the whole construction is situated not above, but below the supporting surface. And now the soaring forks show. We attach two forks by their throngs, insert a match between the throngs and put it onto a table's corner or onto a bottle. The forks seem to be soaring in zero gravity. Thank you.